Do you know what that is? In the United States, there is a White House in Washington, D.C. Why do you think this is important in the United States? Because this house is, looks like white? No, this color is not that important. It represents, it shows that country, this symbol of country, and also the presence in living there. Think about it. What is a temple? Holy temple. Holy temple itself is not important because the building is beautiful, building is mighty. No. Father God lives in there. Holy temple symbolizes about his presence. Then think about it. God tear down all man-made temple. And by his blood, Jesus Christ on the cross, and whoever believes in the Lord Jesus Christ, God make you the believer as temple. Which means God abides in us. Holy Spirit abides in us. So God called our body as temple. This is important. God abides us. So this is very, very terrible Terrible sin is not just to break some, some laws. Terrible sin, we not give our heart to our Lord Jesus Christ all. Because we are born again. Because we belong to Father God. So your heart, your, your mind, your soul is already given to your Father God. Amen. So we give all our heart to Him. So one day, Jesus whom you love, he will come back. So we continue to see his face and his name. So last Sunday, we talked about uh, faithful and true his name. Now I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse. And he who sat on him was called faithful and true, and his righteousness he judges and makes word. Amen. Amen. And today... Not just the name. We're going to see his face. Face of the one who ride on white horse. We can read together. Go. His eyes were like a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no one knew except himself. Amen. Amen. His eyes like what? What? Flame of fire. Have you ever heard this? Your eyes are windows to your soul. Interesting. But actually that is true. Our eyes are window in our heart. So we want to if you want to see someone else's heart, good or bad or meaningful or kindful, just you can you can see, you cannot see their heart. But if you see their eyes, glimly, glimly, you can see a little bit of their heart. You know, someone looks like really handsome and beautiful. But when you see their eyes, hmm, a little, little bit mean or, or, or some little cruel. But someone... It's not that beautiful, not that handsome, but when they see their eyes, when you see their eyes, so, so calm and peaceful and, and so nice, and you keep want to talk with them. Because you see, your eyes are windows to your soul. You know, in the Bible, we only see eyes, only see appearance only. But actually in the Bible, in Hebrew, Eyes is ein. Ein meaning is spring water or spring water from the source. Think about it. When you see the eyes of God, God as source. What kind of a source? Source of love, source of grace. When you see his face, you can see all kind of his love and 
and faith, I mean, the grace and all kind of beautiful things from God. So we, we pray that don't turn away from your face of God, Father. You can pray like that. Because he's ein in, in, Greek, in, in Hebrew, ein. You can see all kind of his love and, and, then, and the greatness and the faithfulness. So um, King David, when he prayed like that, my soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and behold the face of God? He's really yawning. He's really looking for, for to see God's face. Because he, when you see God's face, full of grace and full of love. So when Noah, Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. So same as he, what is that? He have grace and favor in God's eyes because God is source of grace. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Actually, the, the eyes of Jesus Christ are the same as full of iron. That's the source of spring. Comes out the love and great and faithful and come out from God. Patience and all kind of goodness from God. But Jesus Christ, who will come, second coming, his eyes is not no more love, no more grace. Actually, he has a source of grace and love. Actually, grace and, and love is keep going on, never stop to you, to the believers. But last day, Jesus came as will come as what? Judge. So today. His eyes like what? Flame of fire. Meaning is the Lord no longer his eye never tolerate all kind of a sin and badness. He never again forgive the human being because this is time to judge. He sees all our spirit. He reveal all our heart. His eye totally. The eyes of judgment. No one can hide in front of the eyes of Jesus Christ, our judge, when he come back. So before he come back, if you don't believe in Jesus Christ, come to him. Then Jesus is going to forgive everything. And when Jesus come back, he welcome you. He glad, glad to see you. You know, Judgment. What does the Bible say that? Hebrews chapter 9, 27. And as it is appointed unto man once to die. Everyone know that we die once. Whether you believe it or not, you die. But after this, the judgment. After this, the judgment. Interesting thing. What is that? Everyone should stand before God's judgment. But they have to pass the death. Whether you believe it or not, you die and you pass the death and you finally stand before God's judgment. But Satan, blind our eyes. No. Death is done. Death is over. Finish. Maybe we can think about it. You know, uh, Albert Camus in France, um, the writer, he, he wrote uh, The Strangers, this famous artist, I mean, the writer. And among his uh, wonderful words, and he said, nothing is more dis despicable than respect based on fear. Isn't that a great word, right? Nothing is more despicable than respect based on fear. Wow. And he said there another word about death. I, he, he's, he's a non-believer. He said, I believe death not into another life. 
Death is like a door. If door closed, that's it. This is a worldview. This is a viewpoint of all the people about death. Death is done. Death is door closed down. When you die, the end. So when you think about death, it's so sad. You know, king and rich man, they enjoy everything in this world. They, they, they command people and they whatever, whatever they want to do because they have lots of money. But death makes them miserable. Death makes them more shabby than other people. That is death. What about the lo loved one? When you walk loved one and eat and loved one with them and being with them happily, I thought that loving one is a bless in my life, but after you see the death, your lover die is cursed to you, be cursed to you, so pitiful. That is death. You know what? The more biggest curse than death is judgment. After you die, you face judgment. And God punish you if you have no forgiveness in your heart. Your body and your soul and put into the hell forever. If you stand before the judge of God, you know that in this world, when you think about my death is shabby, my death is miserable, my death is so pitiful, it's not just a pitiful things. It is curse when you stand before God's judgment. But Satan, blind your eyes. And it's okay that everyone die. No, everyone die, but after that we face judgment. We face judgment. And at the time, when you see the judge's eye, you cannot see that. Because his eye like what? Flame of fire. He looking at you. If your sins are not forgiven yet, he's looking at you. He's so terrified. Your, your, your legs have trembled. So rather... The mountains and rocks and came to me and hide me from the wrath of Jesus Christ. What does the Bible say? Revelation chapter 6, 16 said that they called the mountains and the rocks fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sit on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. They're so scared. How terrified? Because they couldn't see the eyes of judge. Because the eyes of judge, Jesus Christ, eyes like flames of fire. But it's too late. But it's too late. Because that is all finished. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 7 said, But the heavens and the earth which are now preserved by the same word and reserved for fire until the day of judgment and prediction of ungodly men. Wow. So before you know Jesus Christ, don't die. You have to know Jesus Christ. He is the only one who cleanses your sins and forgives your sins. He is the only one who gives you the right to become children of God. Then when you die, you can face judgment. That judge is your father. Then you're no longer afraid of anything because your sins are forgiven by that judge's blood. How can I believe that and repent? All your sin and come to Jesus and be a follower of Jesus Christ. Shun the wrong things to the right things of Lord Jesus Christ. This is the only way you escape from eternal fire. You know, the real death 
is eternal fire. Why Bible call that is real death? Because you never see. You never see the face of God. How generous. How lovely God. You cannot see. No longer mercy of God is severed. God's grace is severed from you. That is hell. It's full of the fire in hell. That is real death. Luke chapter 16, 24. What does the Bible say? Then he cried and said, Father Abram, have mercy on me. And send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. He just asked one drop of water. Why? For I am tormented in this what? Flame. If God's mercy is severed and cut it down, that is hell. That is eternal death. In there, forever and forever and tormented. They're asking just one drop of the water because this is so flame. This is so terrible place. Because God's grace is no longer open to them. No light, of, no light of Jesus Christ shine to them anymore. That is judgment. That is judgment. So judgment is get through, coming through the flame, fire. But through that fire, you can be saved. What? Listen. 1 Corinthians 3.15 said that if anyone's work is burned, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved. Yes, so as through fire. Amen. What do you mean by that? Your, your salvation is through fire. Fire, refrigerant of symbol, lies about what? The presence of God. So for the first time, Moses saw the, in the wilderness, what, what he saw that? The burning bush keep firing up, never extinguished the presence of God. When Mount Sinai, when, when God come there, they see the fire. So when you see God, holy God, it seems like you are in fire pit. You will die. You are burning up. Whoever, whoever sinners come to God and they, they, they have to die. So all sinners die in front of God's presence with fire. Think about it. Think about it. All the Christian, all the believer is already died by fire and Holy Spirit. Amen. So we died with crucified with Jesus Christ. And only we all die. And, and the only God's grace, you are born again and you able to see, you are able to see the face of God. So if you die once, if you die once, you never die. You live forever. But you not die, you die another one, everlasting death. You understand that? You see what I'm saying? If you die with, with Jesus Christ on the cross once, you never die. What about my body die? Yes, your body just separate. You are never die because you have everlasting life. Just separate for a moment. Once you die with Jesus Christ, you never die. But if you not die with your Lord Jesus Christ, you never ever experience die with your Lord Jesus Christ, you never rep repent at all, then finally you die. Second death in hell forever. So to the believers, to the Christians, everyone scared about death, only the person who have everlasting, they say that, oh, death, where is your sting? They can say that. 
They can say that. Who are they? They are you. They are you. They are all the Christians, believers. How could we so brave before that death? Because the grace of the cross of Jesus Christ came to you by his grace. His, his eyes like a, like a flame of fire. Your, your, your all sins are gone. You walk with your Lord Jesus Christ. God changed your terrible, fearful curse of death turned to glorious death. That is the gospel. That is the gospel. So death of all the saints or believers, it seems like they going go to bed. Daddy, mommy, see you tomorrow. Good night. They're not afraid. Just rest. All day long they play around and hang around and talk about and eating and so so busy days and and then when they go, go to bed, good night. Because they knew that in the morning, they can say good morning. So all the believers, this life is 60 or 70 or 80 years, all our lives and done. And, and, and so exhaust his body. Okay, time to, time to rest, time to sleep. Not afraid. Because when you wake up in the morning, you wake up in heaven with your beloved Lord Jesus Christ. That is death we Christians understand in the Bible. This is the second coming. So we call out loud and, and sing a song and praise God and say one another, Maratha, Amen, Jesus, come back. Why are we waiting? Why are we looking forward to Jesus come back? Because we are waiting our beloved one, our Lord Jesus Christ coming back. This is gospel. Turn terrible death to true Sabbath. Amen. Amen. But if you not repent, if you still have your ego and, and the badness and, and terrible sins till you have last day, last judgment. You'll be like an empty husk. You can burning up the fire of judgment. What did Jesus say in Matthew chapter 3 11? I indeed baptize you with on, water unto repentance, but he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize we, we baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Jesus will do that. He, his we knowing fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly clean out his threshing floor and gather his wheat into the barn, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Before Jesus come back, we return back to him. We return back to God. When we say that, we, we keep saying about the second coming of Jesus Christ, someone's still afraid, someone's still fear about Jesus' second coming. Why? Because they are scared when Jesus come back. They see the Jesus' eye, like a flame of fire. Yeah. Everyone's so scared. Jesus' second coming, everyone's so scared, frankly speaking. But we have faith from God. We only trust our body, we trust our behavior, our good deeds. We are so scared Jesus' second coming. But if you believe the word of God, you never scared. Why? Because Jesus Christ already redeemed us. We call Father God. We call God Father. So we call Him Father, Father, Abba. So we believe His promise of God. We never afraid of anything. 
Jesus' second coming. Instead, we are waiting. Our, our Father coming back. Our Lord coming back. Our Bride coming back. Our Shepherd coming back. Our, our Savior coming back. We are longing. And also, remember that all to the believers who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, remember that He, he is not coming back for, to judge you. He s coming back for to giving you the crown of righteousness, the crown of God, crown of everlasting life. Remember that. Next Sunday, we'll talk about the crown. So before you see Jesus' eye, the flame of fire, we can come to Jesus, repent, confess all our sins, and you walk with Jesus Christ, then you finally see that his eyes, not for you, his eyes is the same as it used to be, the loving eyes, the gracious eyes to you. His eyes are always full of favor, but finally he come back, his eyes like a flame of fire, he judge everyone, whole world. I want you, come the refuge, your Lord Jesus Christ. You're no longer afraid about anything. You are so safe. You are so secure because you are in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Father, thank you, Lord God, for your word this morning. Yes, Lord, we are waiting for your second coming, our Lord Jesus Christ. Whenever we see our bodies, our behaviors, We also, same as other people, so scared your second coming. But we have faith you given to us. Your promise is so precious. You made us your children. So you, we are no longer afraid of anything. Instead of, instead of scary, we are waiting and looking forward to your second coming. Because you are not come here for us. to judge. You're coming for us to give us crown. Thank you, Father. I want all our Couch and Great Church family stay in the Lord and they find they are so secure the faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. So, Father, bless them and cover them by your blood. Thank you, Jesus, for your glory. Thank you, Father, God, for your good word in this morning. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and love of Father God and fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all forever and ever. Everyone says, Amen, Amen.